Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the basics of the Remove module. I'm Product Manager Martin Brennan and I'm going to be taking you through an overview of how the Remove module works, what to look out for, and what to do when things aren't quite going your way, especially when and where to use clean plates. And to do this, I'm going to be using fish. So why fish? Well, for a number of reasons. They move around erratically, they're in a fluctuating and badly lit environment, and more often than not, you're not contractually obliged to keep them in a shot. Okay, so here we are inside Mocha Pro 4, and I've already got my scene set up with the fish. And what we're going to do is remove this blurry fish from the midground so that it's not interfering with our main feature hero fish over here on the right. Now we are specifically going to be focusing on the remove module in this tutorial, so we're not going to focus too much on the tracking and roto side. We've already got the scene set up. So if you need to know more about tracking and roto specifically, please check out some of the great tracking and roto beginner tutorials available on the Imagineersystems.com website. So in order to remove our offending object, what we need to do first is to find two layers. A foreground layer that masks out the foreground object we want to remove, and a background layer that's tracked using the available background. So let's first take a look at the foreground layer and how that works. I'm going to come over here and turn on my remove fishy layer. And we can see here that we've got a mask completely covering the fish in our shot. Now the first important thing to note is that this layer can be rotoed out in any way you like. You can do a complete manual roto if you want, or go ahead and do a bit of tracking and rotoing, and any combination just to make sure that the mat completely covers the object throughout the entire sequence. This is really important, you've got to make sure that the entire object is covered through the entirety of the sequence, otherwise you're going to get some artifacts when you actually do the remove. It's also important to note that you can be pretty sloppy with your mat in most situations. You can see here that I've just got a basic garbage mat around the object and I've not been that accurate with my edges. And this is fine, you just need to make sure that it's completely covered and probably as close as possible. But you don't need to go in and accurately get every single edge around your object. So the second thing we need to determine is the background behind the object. And this is where it starts to become a little bit more tricky because there's a few things you need to consider when you're working with the background. Number one, you need to make sure that when you track the background it is an accurate track. So this is different from the foreground object where we could be a sloppy mat and it didn't matter if we tracked it correctly or not, but the background has to be accurate because because this is the thing that's going to be looking over time to see how to remove the shot correctly. So in order for us to do that, we need to make sure of a number of things. First, that we have a plane that we can track that will help remove the fish. Secondly, that there's no parallax in that background, and we can see here that because this is quite a close shot, we don't really have a lot of parallax going on, so we can get away with it. We can see maybe a little bit back here when we scrub it, but nothing that's going to be that noticeable. Also, we've got to consider the fact that there are other things coming into that background. We've got the major player fish over here on the right, but we also have this blue fish coming in here that may interfere with the removal process. So all of these things when you're working on a remove can affect how that remove goes and how you approach it in each situation. So because we know that these two fish are going to be interfering, I've actually rotoed them out first. So I'm going to turn on the clownfish here, and we can see that we've got it also rotated out through the entire shot. Now, we probably don't need to completely roto him out over here, because this part of the background is not behind this fish in any part of the shot, but because it wasn't too hard to do, we've done it through the entire shot as well. And this is exactly the same process as we did for our fish we're going to remove. We just did a track, and then we tweaked the track, and then manually adjusted the points to make sure it's completely covered in the shot. Then over on the left here, we've turned on the, the blue fish, and we can see that we've only just had to do a short amount of roto over here on the left to make sure that that blue fish is completely covered as well. And then I've just cut off the layer so that we don't see it anymore. So once we've done our foreground objects, we've got our two guys sitting in the foreground here, and we've got our remove object, we can then go ahead and track the background. So I already have our background tracked, but just for illustration purposes, I am going to actually draw it again. So I'm going to come up here and click the X-Blind tool, 
and we'll draw a large shape that covers the area. I'm just going to hold down the X key here to pan down a little bit to draw a bigger shape, just like so. So once we've got our background shape drawn, we need to set up a couple of things. First of all, we need to make sure that it's below all of our foreground. Keep in mind that the way the layer system works inside Mocha is that anything at the bottom of the stack is furthest away from the camera and anything at the top is closest. So this clownfish and this bluefish are actually kind of in front of our remove fish, which is in the midground, and then we have a background layer. So I'm just going to call this background example. And let's just color that a different color so that we can see the difference. So I'm going to also set up perspective on this track to make sure that I'm tracking all aspects of motion in the background. And I'm going to set my minimum percentage of pixels to about 90. So the larger this value is, the longer the track might take, but the more accurate it is going to be. And in removes, it's a good idea to be as accurate as possible, so a larger value is better. So once we've actually got these parameters set up, we can go ahead and start tracking. And once again, with this track mat option set in our mats, we can see how those foreground objects are cutting out of our background. So I'm going to start tracking backwards here first. So as we start tracking backwards, I'm going to just turn on the grid and just make sure that my track is working accurately. So we can see here that as the blue fish comes in from that left side, it's cutting a bigger hole out of our background layer, and it's making sure that this is staying rock solid and not interfering with the track. So I'm going to come back here over on this side and start tracking forwards. So while this tracks forwards, I'm just going to speed up the recording a little bit so you don't have to sit through it, and we'll come back when the track is finished. Okay, so here we are with the finished track, and I'm just going to quickly scrub through and make sure it looks okay. And we've got a pretty accurate track going on there in the background. As we come to the end of our timeline, however, we can see that that foreground object is poking out of our background shape. So we need to make this shape a bit larger to make sure that it's covering the foreground object completely. So to fix this, we can actually go back to the original keyframe where we drew our background layer and just stretch it out. The alternative is to actually go from where you can see the problem and use the Uber key. The Uber key actually modifies all your keys across time and just cascades the changes. So this means it's easier to work out exactly how much modification you need. And then when you go back to the original keyframe, you can see that change has been modified and it's not tweening the values from your change. Just make sure that you turn off your Uber key again, otherwise that global change is going to happen all the time rather than you generating new keys. Okay, so let's just check to make sure now that our fish is completely covered. And we can see here that he's okay at the beginning of our shot. And as we come across, we can see he's completely covered on the other side as well. So now that we have all of the components we need to do the remove, let's just recap what it is we've done. So I'm just going to turn off my grid here. So what we have here is our foreground mask that's around the entire foreground object and we've made sure that we've covered it completely and that it's covered across the entire sequence. We also have our background track and that is tracked really accurately with the available background that's going to be behind the object. Finally, we've done some roto in the foreground to make sure that any objects that are sitting in front of the background are not treated as background. And this is very important for the final remove, and let's explain why. So when we're doing a remove, what we're doing is saying, take this object and find some background to replace it with. And at the moment on this frame, we can see the fish is sitting in front of the background here. But as we scrub through the timeline, suddenly some background becomes available to use back on that frame. But the problem becomes, when we're actually got foreground objects, Mocha doesn't know that they're not part of the background. So we need to tell Mocha it's not available to use. So if we come back to the beginning of the timeline, we can see how this fish is completely covering this section right here. Now, as we come across the shot, we can see our little foreground fish is flying into the same region that blue fish was just occupying. 
Now, because we've masked out this section, Mocha is going to ignore this frame for using that part of the background. Instead, it will try and find another section like here where it can use background to replace the foreground fish. Okay, so now that we have all of the layers that we need to remove the object, we can start the actual remove process. So I'm going to click on my foreground object and move over to the remove tool. Once inside the remove tool, you'll see that the remove layer has a process cog. And depending on which layer you click, it will actually set that process cog accordingly. So we could go ahead and remove the foreground clown object if we wanted to, but we want to stick with this fishy object just here. Now, when you do the remove process, it's very, very important to get your remove parameters correct. So I'm going to come down to here and let's just go through each one of these separately. So the first thing we want to look at is the search range. The search range is very important, not just for accuracy, but also speed. So we have the first frame and last frame here, and this defines how much of the timeline to actually look at when doing the remove. So if we were just going to be removing from frame 63 to 125, we may want to set this first frame to 63. However, if we've tracked more of the background, we might actually want to keep it at zero because we've got more information we can look at. Even more important is these number of frames before and number of frames after values. By default, these are set to the length of the clip. And the reason for that is if I go to frame zero, what this is saying is, look 126 frames before where the current playhead is, and 126 frames after. Now obviously at frame 0, the before value is not going to count, but after means that it will look at every single one of these frames for available background to use. If I set this to 125, it would ignore the final frame, which may end up me losing valuable information but you can actually start to tweak these values to get really optimal results. So let's take a look at an example of this. I'm just going to come to the middle of my shot here, say so let's say frame 50 for a nice round number. So at the moment this fish is covering this part of the background. If I scrub ahead and keep on watching how that fish is moving and I get to about frame 80, we can see that it's no longer covering that part of the background and it's over here. So we could actually tell Mocha to only look 30 frames before and 30 frames after, and it may be enough to find usable background to replace the fish with over time. And finally down here we have the step in the search range, which basically says how many frames of the background to step through. So by default it's one, which means it looks at every frame. You could set this to two, so it only looks at every second frame, and so on and so forth. It's really good to update this value when you've got quite a slow shot and not much is going on. So for example, like a slow helicopter pan, you might just want to step this up to say five, and you'll still get pretty accurate results, but it will be a lot faster because it only has to look at every few frames. So in the next section we have the illumination modeling and I'm going to cover this more in part two of this tutorial when we look at clean plates. But just a brief overview, none basically means don't do any lighting changes. Linear basically looks at light across the shot and applies a linear light change to the remove to make sure that the lighting looks accurate. And interpolate actually does sort of like a let's see what's on either side of this current frame to see how the lighting has changed and then applies it to that frame as well. So illumination modeling is quite a powerful tool set in remove and it's actually one of the strongest features in the remove module. But we'll cover this a little bit more when we look at those clean plates. Now dissolve is a blending mode that we use to actually sort of blend out the patches that when you're doing the remove of the foreground. By default it's set to randomize or you can use blend and it gives you a width to actually blend that in. And it's just basically to help match footage when you're doing this patching. Then we have 3D compensation. 3D compensation is used when there's a little bit of subtle parallax going on in the background but it's tracked okay and these little tracked parallaxes will cause some artifacts going on in the remove. So 3D compensation tries to accommodate for that subtle parallax and fix it in the removed patch. And then finally we have flood fill which just floods anything that Mocha can't remove with the available colour inside the foreground mat. So now that we've covered all those, let's get on to the actual remove. I'm going to go to the end of the shot where we can see some of the fish 
And I'm going to turn off the mats in this instance so we can see what's going on. To perform the remove, we just need to make sure that our foreground object is selected. And then we can go ahead and just click render. So what Mocha is doing now is it's going through each of the available background and foreground layers and making sure it's finding all of that information and then it will take the object out of the shot. So you can see how this is a powerful technique where not having to do any sort of painting work, Mocha is actually working it out all on the fly from the best available data in the background. So we don't have to go through and hunt and patch in ourselves or go into Photoshop and paint different frames out. Mocha can just handle it with the available masks and then we'll get the most accurate results from that remove process. So to keep the tutorial short, I'm just gonna speed up this render in the recording and we'll come and talk about it once we're done. So let's just take a look at the final result now. So we can see here that the fish is now completely removed from the shot, just with that mask and that tracked background. So let's just take a quick look of what I've done here. So it requires a little bit of setup, but if you take anything away from this overview, remember this. Number one, you want to completely mask out the object you want to remove and any foreground objects you don't want to be treated as background. Two, you want to make sure that you track the background accurately and make sure that background layer is below your other foreground objects in the layer stack, just so that it's treated as background and not foreground. And thirdly, you should tweak your parameters in the remove module for performance and accuracy. Now, I haven't done any tweaks really for these parameters because this was a rather simple remove, but in most production shots, you're going to want to tweak some of these values to make sure that you get the best results. In part two of this tutorial, I'm gonna go in more depth with the remove parameters, and we'll talk about using clean plates when you don't have enough available background to remove the foreground. So that wraps it up for part one. You can check out more tutorials or ask questions in the forums at imagineersystems.com.